there you go. We're going to talk a bit more about wearables now. We've got Frederick Herman from Amazfit. They were, we spoke about your, your gadgets yesterday. Just want to mm -hmm. run through what these are. Wearable technology, I mean, this encompasses everything. What is it exactly that you guys focus on? So right now we're focusing on wrist-worn wearables. So but these kinds of things. Exactly. So things that you can wear on your, on your wrist. And they're primarily fitness trackers or activity trackers. They also track your sleep and your sleep quality. Uh, smartwatches that focus on uh, sports, uh, this one specifically for running, but in general uh, wearables can encompass everything that you can wear on your body, even smart clothing or clips on, on your hip or so. Some might say you're backing a losing horse here because the wearable market hasn't perhaps taken off in the way that people expected it to? Well, I think there is some initial consolidation happening right now um, with uh, yeah, Fitbit acquiring um, companies like Pebble. Um, and fossil acquiring Misfit and so on. But I think it's still in the, in the earlier stages of this industry and we as an industry have to figure out how to, to really serve the customer's needs. Right now we have reached a lot of early adopters, people who want to quantify their, their workouts um, and there's kind of like three different areas that wearables can focus on. One is sports, running, swimming, golfing, anything pretty much and there are ways and how you can improve the sport, how you can improve your, your running form, uh, make sports more safe, and so on. Then you have ones that kind of like act as a communication platform, mm -hmm. as an extension of your cell phone, like many smart, smart watches. And then the other one is kind of like the general public. And, and I think that's where we have to do the most work to really get uh, past the early adopters. Um, to provide more utility and uh, yeah, I mean, that's useful, the, that's, useful functions. That's the issue, isn't it? Because the early adopters only provide so much exactly. revenue stream. And yeah. if you look at Pebble, Pebble were sort of the, the, the big child, the, the golden child at the beginning. Yeah, but then when Apple and, and Google launched Android Wear, yeah. they, were kind of, they kind of got a bit lost. Well, Pebble had a very specific uh, audience that loved the open, open uh, environment and system that everybody could create their own watch faces and, and apps for it and so on. And, um, and the others haven't really ruled the field either. Um, it's, it's still, like, like I said, there is a certain usefulness right now um, in a thing like sports and medical are two fields that we will see a lot more in. Um, and then we have to provide more, more daily useful cases that provide us with either access to our office, to our car, uh, integrations in more IoT, uh, maybe transit system. And in the Bay Area, you have Caltrain. Yeah. You could just swipe your watch instead of carrying another card with you, office access, payments, and so on. Um, and there's still a lot that we can do to make it more useful. Do you remember years ago when the first iPhone was announced and Steve Jobs famously said people don't know what they want until they see it? Um, is that the case with wearables? Do you think there is something that exists out there at the moment? There is a use that people just haven't invented yet and all of a sudden they're going to see it and think, oh my gosh, that's it, that's what the market's been waiting for. Yeah, I think there are plenty of cases where you can pick a certain um, uh, use case or problem that wearables can actually solve and so for, um, but yeah, many of them you're not really aware of. I mean, Lumo created a wearable that, um, that focuses on your posture, and most people are aware that posture is very important, mm. but um, at the same time, um, yeah, it's not, not on our, our minds all the time. And yeah, there is a lot more opportunity in general for wearables to be inserted in your clothing uh, and, and worn on other parts of your, of your body. Literally anything you wear. Frederick Herman, thank you very much for joining us. We've got to leave it there. Um, you know, a lot of us are wearing wearables here because, you know, a lot of us just happen to own smartwatches, fit, fit, fitness trackers, what have you, Rochelle. And the thing is, we are all very proud because this place is so enormous. We are definitely getting way more than our 10,000 steps a day in at the moment, I can tell you that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure. So, Phil, looking ahead, what are some of the most anticipated events for Thursday? Well, we've got quite a few coming up tomorrow. We've got, um, we've got several big Chinese companies. We've got uh, 
uh, quite a few technology companies involved in the mobile phone space tomorrow. But tomorrow is really the big day for the industry to come here because the big announcements really tend to have already been made. We've had two days of media previews yesterday and today. They're where the kind of big killer announcements are there because all of the journalists are there. Tomorrow is when the event opens officially and that is when the sort of backers, the government ministers, the investors, all those people can flood in and they can all really get a sense of what's on offer and what is going to change our lives, some would say, for the better uh, in the coming years.